name is Jessica Tovar, and I work for an organization called the Local Clean Energy Alliance. Anybody here heard of the Local Clean Energy Alliance? Okay, that's good. Um, and the work that I do has really been focused around the East Bay Community Energy Program. Who here has heard of East Bay Community Energy? Okay, more hands, that's good. So um, for the last five years, I think it's been, um, I've been the coordinator of a, of a group called the East Bay Clean Power Alliance. Anybody heard of the East Bay Clean Power Alliance? Play, raise your hand. Okay, that's good. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> you will know who we are by the end of today. Um, so back in 2014, we established the East Bay Clean Power Alliance um, to advocate for a community choice program in the East Bay. And our intent was not just to have a community choice program that replaces PG&E in providing our electricity, but a program that actually reinvests that money that we pay for electricity to a local Green New Deal. Um, and back then, we didn't call it a Green New Deal, um, but what we advocated for was we needed a study and we called it the Local Development Business Plan. And that whole point of that plan was kind of our roadmap for the next 10 years, how we are going to uh, build local clean energy assets. Solar, wind, energy efficiency, um, and demand response, which is just a fancy term for reducing our energy waste. Um, and then other programs like establishing a community innovation grant program um, and then other, other opportunities to build like resiliency projects like microgrids for example um, and in the situation that we are in now with the planned power shutoffs um, there's a desperate need for resiliency hubs places where people can go to power up um, especially for folks who require, you know, electricity for life-saving um, situations, right? Like breathing machines, things like that. Um, so our intent was that we, what we really need is not a program that makes promises of selling us, quote unquote, 100% renewable energy off the market, but actually true clean energy that we can see and own uh, in our communities. So we were successful at that. It wasn't easy, <laughs> I will say that. Um, this last year, we were able to win, uh, uh, well, the program started providing electricity in 2018. And in June of 2019, we advocated for a budget towards our local development business plan. And we, at the time, we were able to secure 5.1 million for that first year which is great. So a lot of these programs are already uh, established or are about to launch. Um, and so that's just the first year. We need to go back every year and ask for more money because it's not going to be given, just given to us automatically, right? Um, and so we've really played a role in actually making sure that this money goes to community benefits, right? So part of the problem that we have, I just want to make this clear, is that these programs cater a lot towards industrial, um, industrial ratepayers, municipal cities. Um, and it's almost as if, oh, you know, ratepayer, household ratepayers, they'll get something, they'll get a little savings here and there. We have to be like, actually, no, we need a lot more than that, right? Um, so. We have this community choice program made a commitment to doing this local Green New Deal work. Come October of last year, we start hearing the CEO of the program, his name's Nick Chassett, talking to the board, which is made up of elected officials from all the different cities in East Bay. Um, and if you live in Berkeley, it's Jesse Aragon. If you live in Hayward, it's Al Mandel. Um, so there's uh, about 12 or so representatives on the board. So Nick Chassett, the CEO, starts talking about, you know, we have this 
carbon-free allotment that's being offered by PG&E, and it's free, you know, we should take it, we should really, you know, uh, urging, like, your, our city representatives to move forward and vote for this. And at the same time, we were also hearing that he was recruiting other community choice programs to also take this. So, you know, we wrote a letter saying, uh, you know, nuclear energy is not clean energy, and we're well aware that that actually is used to displace doing actual clean energy, renew renewable energy in the community. So, um, for various reasons, we were <laughs> opposed to that. Um, but we had to do a lot more research. Um, you know, I, I just really, it's really important for me to just highlight that we got really one-sided information as if this were a good thing. Um, and that was very troubling because we knew that there was more to the story. And as we began to do more research, we discovered the Alliance for, um, for Nuclear Responsibilities case at the CPUC to shut down Diablo Canyon this year. Um, and then it was very clear to us that this wasn't just an East Bay issue, this is a statewide issue, and this is really pg es Trojan horse, right? They're coming in, they're making this great offer, community choice programs are like, oh great, we can you know, call it carbon free and move forward and make all this money off of it. Um, no. <laughs> as soon as we found out what this was really about, this is really about pg e establishing a market, market for nuclear, um, and really, I, I really see them passing off their dirty stuff. People are always like, nuclear is not dirty. And yes, it is. Um, passing it off to community choice programs, PG&E's competitors, right? Um, and then pg is really trying hard to make themselves as the clean energy uh, uh, front leader, which that's laughable too. Um, they're only doing these things out of seeing that they're, they're seeing the writing on the wall that there there's com competition out there right none of these things come from the goodness of pg es you know investors hearts right i don't think they have any um so on top of this campaign my organization is also fighting the bailout and um, you mentioned the utility justice campaign. It's another campaign of my organization. It's called Rec Reclaim Our Power Utility Justice. Um, and the point to that campaign is really to, to also bring uh, leaders of color to, who are frontline, impacted by dirty energy, to really advocate for what the system needs to look like. And really, it is about gutting PG&E. And uh, I'll take it further than that. We need to get rid of the CPUC, really, because they're part of the problem. They act as a rubber stamp for PG&E. Um, they don't challenge PG&E at all. Um, and that's why we have like that exit fee that um, John was referring to the PCIA, where we're being charged as community choice customers to keep Diablo Canyon open. And even I also learned that even if you are on P in PG&E territory and paying to PG&E, you're also being charged, right? And so, who enabled that? It's the CPUC that allows this. Who enabled the bailout, right? It's the CPUC at the end of the day. So we have a really, a really, um, a really terrible system that really needs to be gutted and and replaced. And the, uh, the only. Yeah. Oh, I'll give you an action right now. But just to come back, um, that the whole point is, if we were as a community at the table in the first place and had a say in what our energy system looked like, it would not look like this. It would not look like nuclear, it would not look like waste that we don't know what to do with. It would not look like gas-fired power plants in like our, our blackest communities, poorest communities, having children, you know, suffering and, and you know, going to the hospital because they can't breathe at night, right? Um, so, in terms of an action, I do have an action for you. We have a petition that's been circulating online, and it's to demand that the East Bay Community Energy Board members actually reject taking that nuclear and hydro that's being offered by PG&E. Um, and on top of us actually fighting that, we also are really um, concerned 
we're, we're, there's this huge question right now that nobody's answering, but to our knowledge, if any community choice program were to take that offer from PG&E, they're actually barring themselves from intervening on the calculation of the PCIA. That PCIA ex ongoing exit fee is about to go up again this year. So community choice programs really need to not take this for a lot of reasons, okay? So um, some of my comrades, Barbara and Cheda, they have flyers with the, with the website for our petition. When you go home, please sign this petition. Please forward it to people you know in the community. Even if they don't live in the East Bay, it's very important that even the anti-nuclear activists are aware of this in other communities um, and sign it because this is actually a bigger issue than just the East Bay. And that's another thing that's wrong with our system. Everything is piecemeal, so it doesn't make sense to us. But at the end of the day, fortunately, there are people, like the people up here, who are watching this at a statewide and national level. Um, and if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't know what the hell these people are doing, right? Um, so that's very important. So in that flyer, you have the petition website, and you also can write a direct email to the East Bay Community Energy Board. Write your own, especially if you have experience with issues around nuclear, the dumping, the processing, whatever it is, um, you can write to the board directly. My phone number, my email is on there. Let's keep in touch. At this point, um, the board meets every month. They're meeting next Wednesday in Hayward at 6 p.m. The item is not on the agenda from what I've seen, um, but you can speak during public comment at the beginning of the meeting to tell the board to reject this, um, this offer. Uh, I am being told that it's going to per potentially appear on the agenda March 18th as an action item where they will vote, but that m date, we're not sure yet until we get the actual agenda, which is usually days before. Um, but at this point, I would say be, let's be vigilant. Let's be prepared to be there March 18th at Hayward City Hall at 6 p.m because the only way we're gonna make sure to hold these, this, these people on the board and the staff accountable is to show them the, who, who they're representing. Their own tagline for the program is called the power to choose. We have the power to choose. And I was very confident when I said, the community is not gonna go for this. And I need you there to speak for yourselves because they look at me like, well, you're just one person, you're just one organization, or you're just one alliance, and we need to, we need to flood the room. 